Ezra Bridger is going to go to the dark side in Rebels Season 3, and I have the reasons why. Hello Star Wars fans, my name's Joel Robinson, and this is Star Wars Rebels Theory Crafting. At the end of Rebels Season 2, there was a glaring question mark about the fate of Ezra Bridger. Specifically, will he turn to the dark side? After much deliberation with myself, I have decided that he will indeed turn to the dark side. And here's why. It is no secret that Dave Filoni, the executive producer of the show, is a big fan of J.R.R. Tolkien, specifically Lord of the Rings. Listen to the speech he gave for the National Center for Women and Information Technology. I can always point to two female characters that made a huge impression on me. One would be Leia, the other would be the character of Eowyn from Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. I won't go into that, it's not my franchise, but <laughs> Lynn will appreciate that I don't. But the idea that Eowyn slew the Witch King, slayed him, blew my mind as a kid. I had to go back and read that chapter several times in a row right there, because as a young boy, I had never come in contact with that concept, that this woman took out this main terrifying villain. All the men were afraid of him. Go look at that, different franchise, then come back to Star Wars, please. But it's worth looking at, because as an artist, you're just going to absorb everything around you. Knowing that Dave Filoni loves Lord of the Rings, you can begin to draw some interesting similarities between it and Rebels. In the finale of Rebels, our heroes travel to a land of shadow and ash, called Malachor. If you have read any of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, then you also know of a similar land with a strangely similar name called Mordor, and the similarities don't stop there. Ezra, similar to Frodo, is tasked to go to this evil land by Yoda, a great wizard, like Gandalf. Ezra arrives on Malachor and is drawn to touch the stones. The stones themselves are similar to the Barrow Downs described in Fellowship of the Ring. Here's a photo of actual standing stones from Oxford, where Tolkien lived. Do you see the similarities? When Ezra touches the stone, he is transported, along with Kanan and Ahsoka, to the land of the dead. This being shown by the frozen bodies of the dead surrounding the Sith Temple. Then they are attacked by several Inquisitors, and once separated, Ezra meets his golem, Darth Maul. The similarities between Maul and Gollum are so strong. A creature, consumed by evil, appears to be weak, but really is consumed in his desire for knowledge and power. Maul takes Ezra to the Dark Holocron, which is basically the one ring to rule them all. And in the climax of the story, Ahsoka, who Filoni has described as this series' Gandalf, fights Darth Vader, who is clearly this series' Balrog. Like Gandalf, she's even seemingly killed, which I doubt. But that, of course, is a topic for another video, which you can watch right here. In the end, our heroes escape, and Ezra is left with the Holocron. So what exactly does this have to do with Ezra turning to the dark side? Well, if the Holocron is truly like the Ring of Power, then like Frodo, Ezra's mind will slowly be polluted by the Holocron. Over time, the Holocron will consume him, and he will fall to the dark side. Even if he does not see his own actions as evil, he too will become a slave to darkness. This will be his greatest test. If you would like to learn more about Ezra's fate, then you can click the annotation here to be taken to one of my other videos. Let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next and what you think will happen to Ezra. This topic was suggested by Veronica Diaz, so thank you so much, Veronica. And a special thanks to Dr. Lindsay Panji, who taught me all I know about the Lord of the Rings mythos. Without her, none of this video would have been possible. And as always, please subscribe, and may the Force be with you.